he will basically he will still close his eyes if he wants to say something with his mum he will he will and then he will stop he'll start a sentence and he'll stop or or he'll backtrack and start again the hardest part for me in the beginning was not knowing you know where does this fall is this a really small issue and i'm blowing it out of proportion or is this a very big issue We get lots of telephone calls and queries every day from parents and others who are asking about their children who stutter and asking what they can do to help. Everyone kept telling us he would grow out of it. And even our pediatrician, every visit we would uh, bring it up and, um, you know, we were just told even by the preschool teachers this is sometimes normal and that he would grow out of it. I think we felt extremely guilty that we might have caused it. Yeah, I think a natural response is, is it something we've done? Is it our lifestyle? Um, we, we know there are things that definitely don't help it. Um, and it's, it would be nice um, if you knew those immediately. One of the most important things we want you to know is that there's no evidence that parents cause stuttering but there are lots of ideas and things that you can do to help your child. We know that each child is unique within a family situation, and we know that parents often have the right instincts for which things will have most impact for their child. When he's excited, he will stammer more. Um, tired, he will stretch the words out. When he's tired, I know he's struggling, so I have to give him routine, a bedtime routine, same time every day. I think one of the first things that parents often ask us is, I know that my child should slow down, but I don't know how to help him to do that. Although we might be tempted to say to the child, slow down, take your time, maybe that's not going to help the child because he might get the message that what he's doing is wrong. We wouldn't want him to think that. Mm. He might also be just thrown off of what he's trying to say if someone interrupts him and says, slow down. And so maybe what we can do is just adopt a really unhurried manner ourselves. So appear very calm. If, even if maybe the child's stuttering is making you feel anxious, trying to have a very calm demeanor and using pauses to just give ourselves time to think, give the child time to process what we're saying and really make the whole thing as unhurried as we can. We knew right away, you know, to slow our speech down, you know, and to not correct them in that, or not tell them to stop or, you know, or start over, you know, those things uh, we Basics. did pick them on. So, but yeah, so we did, we were immediately doing some things. I speak very fast, not speaking very fast now, but I do, and I think that doesn't help the situation. Even though you may feel rushed, if you can convey, we're just going to take our time, we're not in a hurry, those kiddos are going to follow your lead. So we know that children do need a lot of time to talk, mm -hmm. to think through what the answers to questions are or what sort of ideas they want to tell us about. We, we have time, we have time. I'm not going anywhere. Whatever you want to say to me, I'm here for you. What I found myself doing was asking too many complex questions. Right. And again, treating them like they're way older than they are. So I had to be very conscious of, of the questions that I ask. It's really natural for parents to ask their children questions. And I think sometimes they think that's a really helpful thing to do because it's going to encourage them to talk, which will help their language development. But maybe for the child who stutters, that can be a bit of a difficult thing for them because being bombarded with questions sounds a bit like you're not going to have a lot of time to think about what you want to say in your response and maybe some of those questions could be quite hard to answer to because they're quite complicated questions. And when you see family members around him talking really, really fast. Um, or, or skipping through questions, they'll ask one question and before he's had a chance to respond, they immediately start on their second and third question. And as an adult, you can process all that in the background, but, you know, disfluent children certainly can't. 
you make sure you give them plenty of time to think about what they want to say and then to say it and make sure they've really finished before you come in with something else that you want to say. And sometimes too you can turn it around so that maybe what otherwise might have been a question turns into more of a comment. So if you want to find out what they had for lunch today, then saying something like, uh, I, I had uh, soup for my lunch today. I wonder what you had. Or sometimes you can just say, I had soup today. Yeah. And, and see, see what, what happens. happens. <laughs> <laughs> really listening to children is a really important skill to use with all your children, actually. One of the ways that we can indicate that we're really listening is particularly to stop for a moment what you're doing and give the child your eye contact. Show them that you're looking because that helps them to, to know that you are actually listening to what they say at that moment. Just turn around and look at him so that he knows that you're listening and you know that he's trying to answer you because some people think he's not answering because they're not looking at him but you can see in his face. He's trying to answer. The simplest things of eye contact, cold confirmation of, of I hear you, mm -hmm. you hear me, we understand, we are communicating. You can uh, really um, go a long way with the child by not uh, interrupting him during his speech because that makes him very frustrated knowing that he's trying to talk or, or speak to someone and you cut him off. I'm listening more to what you're saying. I mean, I could see within just a few minutes the difference that it was making. Like, well, before I think I was doing all of the talking. And I think the other thing to say is that you can't listen the whole time and you especially can't do this high quality listening mm -hmm. the whole time. It's difficult in busy life to constantly always get down on your knees to talk to them or, you know, with a, I've got a newborn baby, so with a baby, you're trying to deal with a baby and you're trying to answer a question and it's, you know, it can't always happen. It's not always practical. It's okay to say to your child, I can't mm. listen right now. I'm really busy. I've got to concentrate on the route I'm on right now, driving the car, and I, you have to hold on for a bit until I can listen to you. I think it's quite important to remember that actually we don't really take turns in families. It's very natural for people to interrupt each other and to overlap. And if your family isn't taking turns, that's just a very normal way of a family to be. But for the child who stutters, taking turns is going to be very helpful to them. So it's something you might need to think about putting in place to support their fluency. One of the things that's true of very young children is that it's hard for them to think about what they want to say and be monitoring the conversation to know when it's their turn to jump mm -hmm. in. So I think for little children, if you can use an object, let's say you're at the dinner table, mm -hmm. um, you can use a child's toy, a block, or something like that. And we, you know, in the beginning we were passing around the salt shaker, you know, your turn to talk. Yeah. And I was amazed how fast that gelled. As long as everybody in the household has equal turns and they know that they will get a turn eventually. Making a, a place where Everyone felt like they had the floor until they relinquished the floor, which was very hard. Um, when you start doing that, you realize how much we interrupt one another or finish each other's sentences. You have to treat them equal. One kid is finish and then turn by turn. We would make sure that, hey, you know, it's not your turn yet, it's Ryan's turn. And then Ryan would go. And then they, had, they, they caught on very quickly. I think sometimes parents are tempted with a child who is stuttering to feel that, that you know, they must be given the floor. And uh, that would not really be teaching them very good uh, manners or to behave in a way that other people would accept too if they get the idea that they once they've got the floor, they can take it for as long as they like. It's a sibling um, dynamic, um, you know, both competing for time and, and your time and trying to get the floor. You know, even now they'll say, I'm talking. Yeah, you're it's my turn me. to talk. So I think you're it gave them some very valuable skills. I'm sure that confidence is one of the big issues that uh, parents worry about for the child who stutters. I don't mean focusing on the talking. I mm -hmm. think this is much more about building up his strengths, knowing that he's good at certain things, making sure that if he's done something well, he pointed out to him. That was a lovely drawing. You really took your time to do that so nicely. One of the important things about uh, 
giving praise that means something is really for the child to be very sure about what it is that you would like to praise about what he's done. So if he's put his toys away, it's, it will be very important for him to know that. So I noticed that you've put all your toys away in the box where they belong. And then adding a label to it, things like you're very helpful, or you're so thoughtful, or I really appreciate you, you're really responsible, things like that, so that the child walks away and they think to themselves, hmm, I'm really helpful. Mm. Those are all ways that will help build their confidence. With children, you chat with them for being bad, and then when they've done something really good, you might pass a comment, but they don't really know what they've done good until we read the book, and it's about spelling out completely what they've done, how they've done it, and why you're really pleased, and, and a word that describes something that's really positive. And William has, has really relished, you know, using words like, that's very clever, that's very grown up, you know, very proud of you. It's nice to see, because you can see how happy it makes him yeah. feel. I think, in addition, a child who feels listened to, properly really listened to, will feel good about himself as well. So the combination of praise, the listening skills, the taking your time, means that he's a special person. Mm -hmm. Well, most of us lead pretty busy lives and where we might think we have plenty of time with our children, actually sometimes it's quite hard to find time just to spend some individual time with a child. And what we find with uh, the children who stutter is that many of them have responded really well to having a bit of one-on-one, -on -one, undivided attention, one parent with that child and no interruptions. And that special time doesn't have to be very long either. It only needs to be literally five minutes. Mm. Actually, even five minutes is pretty difficult to find in busy parents' lives. And I felt like that was such a break for me because it took some of the pressure off that I do not have to be perfect all day every day, that I can work on this, set aside a small block of time at night just to really give it your all. We had our key things that we were going to work on for that, for that particular week. And, um, you know, whether it was something as simple as, um, you know, eye contact, mm -hmm. um, you know, letting, the, letting them lead the play. Spending five minutes a day to do that does a couple of different things. It allows you to practice that one skill that you're trying out, and it also really helps your child feel attended to, mm -hmm. and they're getting that special attention from you, and they feel really special, mm -hmm. and so that's why we call it special time. This one-on-one -on -one time is slowing it down, giving him the confidence mm -hmm. to kind of speak at his own rate of speed and say no what he pressure. Wants to say. Yeah, I um, I feel like pretty early on we both had moments where we'd say he was incredible tonight, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's really encouraging. And making sure that that time is away from everybody else. Mm -hmm. You've shut the door. You've turned the television off. You've turned the phone off. And so for that five minutes, that child really does get the sense that they have your complete and undivided attention. And if you have other children, it might be really important to think about giving them a special time too, because what we wouldn't want to do is make it unfair. We want the child who stammers to be treated much the same as the other children in the family. Normal rules apply. They apply as much to your stuttering child as they do to any other child in the household. It's really helpful for parents to get the idea that if, if they want to know how to manage a child's behaviour at any time, they should think to themselves, if this child wasn't stuttering, what would I do? Discipline, they both get disciplined. It doesn't matter that he stutters. If he's naughty, he will get disciplined. If my older son's naughty, he will get disciplined. There's no special treatment at all. Parents do get very concerned that if they tell their child off, that might, that might make them more stressed, that they might stutter more. Um, I think that it's very important within a family that you keep the same rules for every child mm -hmm. within the family. If he did something wrong, I'll give him a time out, same thing like his, his sister. I treat them equal. We want these kids to grow up to be responsible and polite and interact with each other um, in the same way we would any other child in the family. Mm. So the same rules apply. 
these things are helpful not just for the child who stutters but for all children. We're teaching them good communication skills, we're building their confidence and that's good for every child. Thank you.